Hey guys, I just uh, I thought I'd show you a good example of of using these dual end stops and this this home position that I now have. Um, so so the project I've got going here is a big sign. You can see it just barely fits in the enclosure, um, but it does. It works, and uh, I'm cutting uh, the state's map on it, and uh, this all all the states will be relieved. This this will be this will be reduced down slightly. Uh, I'm going to go back in with a sixteenth inch bit and hit all these uh, edges, bring them in a little closer and uh, f define the detail a little more in the smaller stuff, the smaller states up here. And uh, so, so here's the cool thing about this, you know, before, let's see, I'll show you for example. You see this, this right here? That was the first test run of this map and of doing it this way because I've used uh, just, the fin just the finish allowance in ESTL cam to make the state lines. So, the thing about that map is I ran I had to run it all in one job because I didn't I didn't have a constant home or a home that I wanted to depend on and I wanted to turn out nice. And so so I had to run that whole job. That was a long job because uh it pocketed everything out. That's even a little deeper. Pocketed everything out with an eighth inch bit and then it come back and defined all the lines with a little sixteenth inch bit. So that was a long job. And uh, really, I come out here late at night after the, the family goes to bed, and uh, I just don't have a lot of time to do this. So, so this is, was really kind of crucial for me. Th this makes it all, this, this is a whole different deal now. Because, you know, there was a lot of times I just, I just didn't have the time or I was just too afraid to, to start into a cut, a big cut, and then just, you know, it go late, late into the night, and I just can't do that. So, so that's what's great about this. I, I, I carved these out last night, and uh, you know, after I was done, I I just went to bed. And now I know I come back in here tonight, and I'm going to be able to hit it, put it right back where it's supposed to be. It's going to go right back to that constant home, and I'm going to be able to go back to cutting, and there's no issues. So that's what's really awesome about it. So I figure I would show you um, kind of the process of how this goes down. Now, give me just one minute here. Okay, so um, I forgot to save my file here, so I'm going to go ahead and let it save, and I'm going to talk about this uh, this case over here real quick, and also these this installation of the end stops. So. You can see what I did. I used the holders that that they that Ryan recommends on the site. Bought the end stops from him. You're going to need uh, four end stops. You're going to need a couple extra drivers to add to your ramps board. You're going to need some jumpers to go under those drivers, and you're going to need some wiring. And so, for wiring, I originally bought this uh, this wiring kit. I originally bought just uh, some wire, and it had ends on it and stuff, and I thought that uh, it was the right ends, and they were long enough. Well, they were not the right ends, and they weren't long enough. But I used that wire that you see here to uh, to install these, and, and I bought these little kits. And these kits here were just off of Amazon. They were really cheap. I think it was something like eight or nine bucks for all of this. Maybe a little more, I'm not sure, but uh, they, they weren't expensive. And these ends here, in case you didn't know, because it took me a while to kind of figure out what they're called, just to, just to buy them. And these are called DuPont connectors. And so in this kit, they're single, you know, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up. Comes with, uh, you know, these headers here that we you wouldn't, wouldn't use for this project. And it comes with crimp on male and female ends. So that's what I use for that. Um, and that worked great. So, um, so basically, what I did was I just uh, this just for you know wire routing. I ran these through this through the tube as well, and then what I did here was just I tied these together, ran ran these both through this tube, and then every, then this comes out here, kind of connects up with that, and then kind of goes out my enclosure. And so that turned out really nice. I, I really like it, and uh, the firmware works great. And so, and another quick thing here is this case right here. I kind of looked on Thingiverse and just didn't see a case I love. 
So uh, I, I saw this one, and uh, you know it was made for ramps, but it wasn't made for this particular setup because it just it wouldn't fit. Th this lid, I had to redesign this lid. I had to to pocket this out on the inside for clearance uh, of the some of the board components, and uh, this is just a separate top plate that screws on. Little fan from from the site there, you know, uh, Vicious One's shop that I bought uh, to keep the drivers cool, and so I'll I'll post this up. It works really good. Now the wiring is, is pretty pretty snug. The wires kind of all come back here in a few cutouts, but uh, after you get them in there, you get them all poked down, you get everything out of the way. You know, you fight with it a while. It works. It works really good. And uh, this is just an external display version. You know, I just got the wires to here to the LCD. So, so that's cool. That that this case I really like. It's just um, it just sets here. I thought about even making some mounts to put it up here on my. On my enclosure, but uh, anyways, I, I really like that. So, all right, here we go. So I'm going to yank this uh, SD card out here. All right, and uh, one thing that I'll note: currently, the way the firmware is set, which I, I'm, I'm sure this is going to be changed, but uh, it's got uh, soft. In stops, software in stops uh, enabled, and so you can't go negative in the Z with those enabled. So this is just a an M211 command saved to a G code file, and the first thing I do when I turn the machine on is hit that, and software in stops disabled. Okay, so now I'm good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to it's going to be a little bit difficult with one just one free hand here, but uh, I've kind of just very inconspicuously marked. You know my uh, where I'm I'm taking my home position off of right there. So, and I used a touch plate for a while, but I was having so much issues with interference and it uh, being triggered when it wasn't supposed to be triggered that I just gave up on it. So, uh, so I'm just doing it the old-fashioned way. So I'm bringing it in. I'm gonna drop it down. I'm gonna drop it close. Sorry for the the camera movement. I know it's nothing spectacular. So uh, I'm just getting it in there. All right, that's good. So I just get it down close to the material. Go back over to my screen. Move axis. Move Z. And do one of these numbers. Okay. So then um, I use this. I really kind of like the piece of paper. It really works well. I know with the pointed engraving bit, I. You know, it's kind of hard to tell because it's so pointy where it, when it actually is touching the surface. And that doesn't make a difference sometimes, but when you're engraving tiny letters, it makes a huge difference. The Just a tiny discrepancy in depth makes a huge difference. So um, so I just put that piece of paper in there. You can tell I'm still a little ways away from it. I'm going to bring it on down, bring it on down. And I can see it's touching, kind of touching the paper now. And so... I can still feel it's loose, and I just bring it down until it's not loose anymore, until it pins it. Um, so that's 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 pretty much pinned right there. And so then I just uh, bring it up one, pull my paper out, bring it back down, and that's my Z position that I want. Okay, so uh, I've set up the G-code and ESTL cam to just... Uh, Basically, just home the Z right where it's at, pull it up out of the way, home X and Y, and then go to work. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. So, print from SD. If the state's big. Okay. I know you can't see that too well, but uh, hopefully you get the gist here. So, I see it's pulling up out of the way. It's going to go ahead and home. Okay, now is when I turn my spindle on. And I, now this, this feature, this is just a, a pause. And the, the reason I'm using pause is, is so I can access the screen. Like for a tool change, I can, I can, I can set the Z just like I did with a regular pause and not an MO. So I hope that makes sense. So when I hit the zoom now, it's going to drop down to the, to the, to the zero, just like that. And then I hit resume again, it's going to lift off, and it's going to, it's going to go to work. So, uh, so it's pretty cool. I mean, it uh, really, 
I'm going to turn this down a little here because I know it's... Whoops. Okay, so what's, what's probably happened here is... <laughs> you know, the one time I actually take a video and try to show, show it working... I screw it up. So I must have not got the program saved to that. So what happened file. there was when I saved, went to save the file in ESTL Cam, I let the timer run out, but I didn't actually click OK. So I pulled the card before I hit OK, so therefore the file didn't actually get saved. So when I hit print, it just started cutting the old states, the states that I had already cut. So now it's back at it, same process, same thing, except it's, it's, doing the right, it's cutting the right thing. So uh, I thought you guys also might be a little interested in my enclosure um, it's nothing fancy it's just a half inch MDF some half inch fly here and here just because I ran out of MDF um, plexiglass just screwed from the back side um, this gap here is just simply because of these clamps uh, that are holding the sign they're holding it off keeping it from going all the way down but this whole this whole top just lifts off or lifts up excuse me and you see that board there that's just the stop the holder for the lid so it's like that, really nice. I, I can close it off and I keep all the dust confined to the space. So that's really cool, that's that's really a good thing. So anyway, so you can see now, uh, looks like it's cut in Texas. So great state of Texas. Um, I'm just doing 70,000 steps of cut, 12 millimeters a second, um, eight inch end mill. And so what it'll do is it'll cut, it'll cut this path It'll go back, cut 30 more thousandths to get this to 100,000, and uh, that'll be that for this operation. Now, like I said before, I'll go back with a 16 inch bit and kind of define the lines a little more, cut them back a little more, and really make it look good. So, um, well, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, check back with me from time to time. Thanks.